We've been through the equations of motion for particles. We will now advance our analysis to apply to rigid bodies. So to talk about rigid bodies, they have size and shape. We need to start talking about rotation as well. So I'm going to start off by drawing a few analogies between uh, what we've already been through concerning position and rotation. So, so we use the letter S for position. When we're talking about things rotating, we're usually talking about theta, which is an angle, all right? Usually written in radians, all right? Usually that's written in radians. It can be written in degrees as well, but usually radians is a little easier to deal with. Um, and for velocity, we have the velocity is equal to the derivative of the position with respect to time. When we're talking about angles and rotation, we have the angular velocity denoted by the Greek letter omega. This is not a W, this is omega. And that is equal to the derivative of the angle with respect to time. And the units on omega are usually radians per second, right? some sort of degrees per second maybe, but radians per second is more common. And we see that acceleration as the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. In the rotating frame, we have angular acceleration, which is denoted by the letter alpha, the Greek letter alpha there. Um, and that is equal to the derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time, which is also the second derivative of the angle with respect to time. Okay, and as we talked about uh, velocity, position, those sorts of things, we have these specific equations if acceleration is constant, right? If acceleration is constant, we can use these three equations. Well, we have the same sort of equations in terms of rotating if we have a constant angular acceleration alpha. So we can use these terms, but be careful again, that these only apply if there's a constant angular acceleration. If the angular acceleration is changing, then we cannot use these equations.